G'day, mate. In case you missed it, we've already made Littlefoot and we've already made Spike and Ducky. But today, we're going to be completing the gang and doing Sarah and Petrie. Woohoo! Oh no! Run, Sarah! It's a sharp tooth! Okay, once again, let's start with the armature. Hey, wait, wait, slow down. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, I guess if you missed all of that, just check the top right-hand corner for a link and you'll see another video with the full armature process covered in it. But for now, let's move on to covering this armature. So grab your polymer clay and your Sculpey Pekin Bond and start sticking it on the armature. As usual, I've got my clay here. I've run it through the past machine at size two so that I can apply it to the armature at the thickness that I desire. Just remember you can always be pretty rough with this process. Just make sure that you're covering the armature entirely. And don't forget to press it down nice and firmly too so you don't get air bubbles later. Okay, when that's done, you can start beefing out the armature by putting on all your little muscles. And of course, thickening out those feet. We want those nice and chubby little toes. I wonder if dinosaurs had ticklish feet. Hmm, maybe not. Okay, once that's all done, you can start moving on to the smoothing out phase. I've just got my trusty silicon tip tool here and my wonderful fingers and wham, before you know it, it's as smooth as a baby's behind. Before we add the wrinkly details, I liked to sculpt the head. So grab a lump of clay and roll it into a ball and then start shaping it and adding extra pieces where you need them to add the chubby cheeks and the other details. You can smooth all that in with your silicon tool as well, and of course your fingers if you desire, or a little bit of both if you're tricky. I must admit the silicon tip tool is probably my most used tool in the arsenal. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, worn out around the edges. Now I'm just grabbing my glass kabuchon eyes here. I've bought these ones off Etsy. You can get them on eBay and all sorts of places like that. And just add in some eyelids and eyelashes. We want to go for a grumpy Sarah look for this pose because to be honest I don't really remember Sarah being any different than Grumpy all the time. And popping her little horn. Even though she's a three horn, she's only got one when she's little. It's kind of like Spike. He doesn't quite have his tail spikes yet. Don't forget to give her little nostrils. Breathing is an essential part of life. And here I'm just cutting out a flat piece of clay to get her head plate. And once you're sort of happy with the shape of that and scaled it up against the body as well, you can start shaping it and fitting it to the head. Anyway, back to this amazing silicon tip tool. If you don't have one and you want to do polymer clay, I highly recommend you pick one up and I've got affiliate links below for them. So make sure you check them out. Just remove a chunk of clay from behind the head so that you can place the head onto the armature. And now we can move on to the detailing phase. So I'm starting off by adding little indentations here for the toenails. And placing the little toenails into each of the little holes. Now we can grab our dental pick tool and come in and do the wrinkles. Don't forget the little lumps along her back. 
I like to roughly map them out and then come in and sort of tidy them up with a silicon tool later. Okay, now we're going to start with the pan pastels. I'm going with the yellow for the undertones. So I usually do a lighter yellow first and then I come over with the dark yellow but only ever so subtly. Do remember that sometimes when you bake these in the oven the colours might tend to fade a little bit as well. Okay, now when you've done her belly and her eye details, we can do the rest of the body. So I've got an assortment of oranges and light browns here. And I'll just start with the orange shade and I'll cover her whole body first. I also have an affiliate link below for the pan pastels too, if you ever wish to buy those and you're looking to support me as an artist. Just remember I'll get a tiny commission if you purchase from those links. I also have a Patreon too where I go into a lot more in-depth discussion on how to use pen pastels on polymer clay. So you can find details for that below as well. Okay, when you've got your, your orange coat down and dusted, we can move on to creating the shadows in the crevices. So I have the medium dark orange here and I'm just going over all the little wrinkles and joints and places where the sun don't shine. Like the booger holes. This just helps make all those little details pop out a little bit better. And when you're done with that, you can pop her in the oven for her final bake before we add Petri to her back. Okay, when she's all cooked and ready to go, we can start on Petrie. I must admit, I think Petrie is probably my favourite character from The Land Before Time. He's a little rough around the edges, but um, I don't know, there's something about his cheeky, goofy little personality that just pulls at the heartstrings. So we won't need an armature for Petrie. You'll just be able to make him straight out of the clay. So you can start shaping his head and his body. I like to keep a reference photo close by when I'm doing this. It makes the process a lot easier. I'm using these glass eyes that I've got off Etsy. Now he does have white eyes in the cartoon, but I decided since I'm doing the realistic approach that I would give him brown eyes. I do find it a lot trickier to work in this size. Everything must be so much smaller and my fingers, well, they don't shrink. So to help the process along, make sure you use your tools to smooth things out. Okay, now we're just gently cutting out the mouth. I think as soon as you get the mouth done on the character's face, it really makes them pop. Now I'm going to use a little bit of wire in the body here, just to attach the head. And for this part, because he has such tiny little fingers and claws on his feet, I decided that I'd use some black wire. So I'm just twisting it into the shape of his toes and his fingers, cutting off the extra wire and shaping and bending as well. And when you're happy with the general shape, grab a little bit of black clay and we're going to use that to sort of stick it all together and to sort of pat out the hands a little bit more too. And they'll only need a quick bake, so I'm popping them in at 130 degrees Celsius for maybe 10 minutes. Once they're done, you can start popping them into your little body sculpture. And you can keep playing with the shape until you're happy with it on the body. Alright, now we're going to start the wings. Now this took a little bit of playing with me. Um, it was kind of hard to get his wings the right shape, but I managed to get on the first go, so I can't complain. So just roll the edges where you want his hands to go in before you push them in, otherwise you won't have any room for them to be inserted. And once he's on the back of Sarah, you can start dusting him. So Petrie has a bit of an orangey coloured beak, 
and his body is brown with really dark brown wings but only on the back so I didn't bother covering them on the inside. And you can use different colored pastels to give him a little bit of tonal variation. Now this is the final bake and then we get to see what she looks like in the glam shots. One minute before you go, did you know that I make cute little dinosaurs like this cutie here? Well, guess what? All of my fantastic patrons, they all know just exactly what I make and they get bonus access to it. So if you want that, check out the description below. But until next time, you can check out how to make Littlefoot or you can learn how to make Spike in these awesome videos that I've already done. Until next time, see you later.